Hi, this is Dave Clark. Today I'd like to use SQL Server Management Studio to review a few tips that I use on a regular basis. I'll probably go over, I think, about, about six, uh, six tips. And the reason that I wanted to uh, mention these tips is that I received a email question from a viewer asking how I get the query results to appear into a separate window. And that's something that functionality I've been using in Management Studio for years. And it got me to thinking, this question did, got me to thinking that perhaps there's other things that I do on a regular basis that might be uh, beneficial to someone else. They, they may not know how, how, to, um, how to perform a certain task or even know that something exists in, in Management Studio. So I just jotted down some of the most common um, that, that I use or some that I think are powerful that maybe um, maybe somebody who doesn't use Management Studio all the time may not uh, have come across. So if, if this um, with, with these six tips, if I don't get them all in this video, I'll break it up into two, two or three videos, try to keep them under uh, 10 minutes each. So for the first one, it is in reference to that email I had received um, about the results set. So for example, I'm going to run this select statement in Management Studio, and you'll notice we get our results window at the bottom of this query window. Now, to have them appear in a separate query window, you can go to Tools, Options, and this is under uh, Query Results, SQL Server, Results to Grid, and we have Display Results in a separate tab, and Switch to Results tab after the query executes. And you have the same on the text mode. Now you notice mine are checked, but that's not happening here. And let me just put this into a new query window. You can see that it, this, it actually does happen. So when I run this, this will put it into a separate results tab. But the reason it didn't here is because you can also control this option on a query by query basis. Uh, simply right click and choose query options or get to the query options uh, up in the shortcuts and access the results grid or text whichever is applicable and, and here I've unchecked the display results in a separate tab option. So this is the default behavior in Management Studio and I prefer it just to look like this. Now I prefer this because then I can see more rows of data um, if you're designing a query and you like to be t uh, typing up here and then see the results and then maybe do some more typing like maybe add an additional column or join to another table you know then certainly this style is beneficial to you but just note that you have the option to switch it for each query window or change the, the default behavior. Um, one, one other thing that I, I believe I'll have to mention in a in another video is that there's this this is a 2008 management studio and notice with the results you can show the results by hitting control R we have results and you can hide the results by hitting control R so I'll hit control R hides the results control R again brings the results back now that's great but in 2012 I'm hitting Control R, and notice down here it says Control R was pressed, waiting for second key of chord. So Control R has been changed into one of those, um, I forget what it's called, but one of the double key, like you have the Control, these are the comment and uncomment sections, or you can highlight a block and hit Control K, Control C to comment, or Control K, Control U to uncomment, things like that. The Control R was added to that global uh, double key set. So you can choose hide results pane and show results pane, but the control R option is not enabled by default. But in another video, I will show you how to get that back in 2012. Okay, um, so that's the first one that deals with the results to a separate pane by default. And the second one is just a brief um, note on that option, when the results go to a separate tab, 
hey, you can see the results here, but then you want to get back to the editor window. Well, using keyboard is fast. Using the, the mouse and the cursor is a little slower, so you could click over here, then start typing again. Your query runs, you get your results, then you click back here. So what I do is whenever I get my results is, you know, review what I need, and then you can hit F6 or Shift F6 to scroll through the tabs up here. So if I hit F6 now, I go to Messages and F6 back to Editor. If I hit, now I'm back on the results, if I hit Shift F6, I'll go back to the Editor. So I Shift F6 is a little bulky, so I'll, if I'm on the results, I usually just hit F6 twice and it'll go through. Now if you happen to have multiple result sets, You notice that the cursor is up in this first row. When I hit F6, it goes to the second one. So if you happen to have, you know, 14 results coming out, that's going to be kind of a pain to hit F6 to go through those. Um, you're probably better off just using the cursor at that point. All right. So there's the first two out of the way: the results to a separate pane and the F6 to switch between the tabs. Uh, the next one is the block highlight. And when I found out about this. A few years back, I absolutely loved it, and I wish I'd have known about it before. Um, it doesn't come up all the time that you get to use it, or that there's a good time to use it. But when there is, it can save you a lot of typing. Um, let me think of what we can do. Maybe if I, oh yeah, I can just script out a table here, for example. We'll script this as a select into a new query window. So what the block highlight can do is you notice, for example, if I highlight, I want to highlight, I want to capture all the column names, for example. So I can start here, click and hold down, and I can highlight all these rows. And I can paste those, and there I have it. But it's kind of not quite right. So then maybe I could highlight these and hit shift tab and get that back over there. But um, another option is to perform the block highlight, which is used with the Alt key. So if I hold down the Alt key and then put my cursor where I want it, I can then uh, control, the, control the cursor with the mouse and highlight just that block. So then if I do any action, it's going to be on that block. So for example, I'm hitting Control-C to copy, so then when I paste, uh, has copied just that portion that I had, hi had highlighted. Likewise, I could do it without that comma in there. If I wanted to just get the column names, for example, I can highlight that. Now, I was doing it with the with the mouse and the cursor. You can also do it with the keyboard. With the Alt key, <clears throat> excuse me, just hold down, uh, for example, the Shift key, and then you can use your arrow keys to uh, highlight just the exact section that you want. Copy that. And paste, and there you go. Um, likewise, you could, for example, if you wanted to move all these columns over, say you like them farther away from your select, you know, like that's a little too close for you. Well, if you highlight all of the, the the rows of the select statement and hit tab, well, everything's moving out. If you highlight these sections and hit tab, well, you're not getting that first one. So you could highlight um, using the Alt key for the block highlight, highlight that section, and then hit the tab, and then just that section will move out or will move back. All right, so that's the uh, that's the block that's the basics of the of the block highlight. And let's see. What else do we want to do? We want to look at uh, find. All right. So for the find, we are probably familiar with Control F, which can do a find, and you know I can type in address, hit enter, and there it is. And I can click Find Next and, and scroll through. Now sometimes though, when you're performing a find the find and replace pops up and it's kind of in your way or you might not be able to see what you're looking for especially if you don't have a lot of real estate 
So there's another option, which is control I, which I believe is abbreviated for incremental search. So if I hit control I, notice that my cursor has changed into a pair of binoculars with a down arrow. A pair of binoculars is synonymous with find or search, you know, you're actually looking for something. And the down arrow indicates the direction that it's going to, um, that it's going to uh, perform the, the find, this find search in. So notice down here it says incremental search and it's got a colon and it's waiting for me to type. So I can just start typing. So I'll type address and notice that's what it found. And then if I hit F3, for the find next, it will continue to go through address. Now, I can also hit, just like everything, there's the forwards, backwards, I can hit control shift I. Now notice the cursor is going up. So it says, what do you want to find? Well, I want to find, um, say, city. And notice it searched up for city and not down for city. Now, hitting F3, though, will not continue in the upward direction. That will continue to go down, but you also have the Shift F3 to search up. All right, I think I'm probably approaching the 10-minute mark on this video, so I'm going to cut this short. So just to review, we've talked about the results to a separate uh, results set to a separate tab, F6 to toggle between the tabs and the block highlight, which was the Alt key. You can use your the mouse or the keyboard to highlight. And we use the Control I or Control Shift I for the incremental search. In the next video, I'm going to uh, discuss some find and replace with regular expressions. Hey, thanks a lot for watching and have a great day.